We were talking about Stanford's expansion plans, which continue forward, although recently uh, the university and the county have run into some conflict and friction. So we're going to try to unpack that. Um, Elena, you wrote a story for the paper this week about uh, what's been happening with the school district and the county. And then today you wrote a story about um, how the university has sent a letter to the county asking uh, to restart some development negotiations and, and, and discuss conditions of approval. So. We're going to make all of that clear by the end of this webcast, hopefully. So, yeah, I, I was, it seems like it's a complicated process. So can you explain the process and how it's different than it might typically be done? Sure. Um, in general, uh, Stanford wants to expand. Um, so they submitted an application to the county, which is the governing body over their land use. Um, that was a couple years ago. It's been working its way through the process. Um, last fall, uh, the university and the county agreed to enter into development negotiations, sorry, development agreement negotiations. That is unusual, um, but the reason why they did that was because uh, this application for expanding uh, academic buildings, building more housing, et cetera, et cetera, um, is just so monumental that there's going to be impacts on traffic and population and the school district and things like that. So in order to try to capture um, all the impacts and then compensate for them beyond what's sort of legally required minimum, um, the county and the university thought a development agree agreement would be appropriate. So that's unusual. Usually what happens even at the city level is a developer has a project, they submit the application, the staff reviews it, the staff does a report, the report goes to the review body, whether that's the planning commission, and then it works its way up. Mm -hmm. So there's no typically no discussions on the side um, with the developer. And the development agreement negotiations kind of, well, I would say hang in the balance, but now they might have yeah. even completely stopped at this point. You talked to right. Joe Simonian, county supervisor this morning, who suspended uh, the development agreement negotiations after the district in Stanford announced very excitedly they had come to an agreement um, mm -hmm. about Stanford giving $138 million over 40 years to help the school district group students that it would generate, their building would generate. Um, but Simidian, you know, pushed back and was upset because their deal was conditional on the development agreement being approved, which he had not wanted. Right, yeah. I know the district was super excited about um, their talks and because they've been pushing so hard yes. for months for mm -hmm. Stanford to uh, With very little money. progress. Yeah, little progress. And uh, the district wanted a new school because mm -hmm. they're really concerned that the influx of students from, from Stanford, new Stanford mm -hmm. housing would really affect the district. Yeah, so um, Simidian said that after he uh, called for a halt to the development negotiation um, in mid-April, um, that he and Supervisor Cindy Chavez, uh, they make up the negotiation um, team. Um, they met with the president and vice president at Stanford, Mark Tessier Levine and Bob Reedy. Uh, last week on Friday and said, hey, you know, we're open to restarting development agreement negotiations, but we would like them to be public and we would like you to guarantee that everything you negotiated with the school district um, for the April 15th announcement, um, all of that kind of rolls over. And uh, according to Simidian, this week, uh, the president and vice president of Stanford came back and said, well, we're not so sure that we're, we would be offering the same uh, level of benefits to the school district, and we would not like them to be public. So mm -hmm. it seems like the development agreement idea is, is tabled mm -hmm. at this point, yeah. Yeah, and that leaves a lot of questions for the school district and the school board. Yeah, um, yeah it does. Which, it's unclear if this will be on their agenda on Tuesday night or not, it could be, um, they haven't decided, but because two board members have now recused themselves, um, Todd Collins and Ken Dauber, whose spouses both work at Stanford, there's only three remaining board members, wow. so they all need to vote if they end up voting on agreement to approve it for in order for it to move forward. Yeah. Maybe you could back up a little yeah. bit, because it, um, so Stanford was negotiating with the county, correct, on this agreement, and they were moving forward, but then, um, According to the agreement, they were not. Stanford was not supposed to be negotiating with any other party. So, can you explain how the school district got into the mix and where we're at now? Mm -hmm. So, talks between Stanford and, and the district had really just uh, been unsuccessful. 
Um, and there was a lot of sort of tension. They weren't going to come to the table or agree on anything. So they just stopped talking altogether. And then earlier this spring, the superintendent announced that they had finally, they'd reached out again, um, agreed to restart confidential negotiations with the help of a um, facilitator in the hopes that they would return to some sort of agreement. And so that was very public allowed mm -hmm. for, which I actually, I don't quite understand the nuances of the development agreement ground rules and why this right. was allowed because they were and very open about the fact that they were going back to the table to and, talk and about. And the school district's concern is if Stanford's development brings in a lot more students, how it will impact schools and how they'll... Yes, because okay. students who live in Stanford housing, um, campus housing is tax exempt, exempt, so the district would not get any additional funding okay. and have to accommodate hundreds, you know, it's kind of unclear how many exactly students, but hundreds of students um, without getting any additional money for it. Okay. Yeah, um, I, I kind of can't see how the school board could move forward with um, their agreement with Stanford at this point. It just seems so messy. Yeah. Um, that if they did, if they did do that, you know, would it be honored really mm -hmm. by the county? Right. That's a huge. So question. then they had started negotiating with Stanford, and then that's when the county found out. Yeah, and under the okay. development agreement, um, Stanford, their negotiations were supposed to end on April fifteenth. Um, and so that was sort of this deadline at which, until which Stanford could not announce anything or be discussing terms of an agreement with the district. Um, the day bef on that day, they mm -hmm. announced this exciting agreement that they had come to, and the board had a special meeting the next day. Um, and emails we got through a Public Records Act request show that there was conversations um, between the superintendent and the board talking about, you know, being careful about when the. the the board meeting would be noticed and careful that it would not be until close to 24 hours beforehand on April 15th, Stanford's mm -hmm. date at which they could then announce an agreement. So people are kind of uh, wondering how credible it is that if, there's, if there have been no uh, discussions between Stanford and the district, how all of a sudden on April 15th they could come up with this $138 million mm -hmm. agreement just like that. Right. So. <laughs> and then Simidian, well, the county, what was the county's concern with this agreement besides the fact that it was negotiated during a time frame where it shouldn't have been negotiated? I mean, really, the, the sticking point was that it was conditional on the development agreement. So okay. in our reporting, so just Midian said, you know, it was sort of like holding a gun to the county's head saying, you know, if, if you don't approve the development agreement, then the district's not going to get this. And of course, everyone wants the district to get this money. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why he said, mm -hmm. let's stop and can't move forward. Yeah. Um, so that threw a wrench in the whole um, deal for Stanford, which is now kind of pushing back, um, saying that we need the development agreement and we need the conditions of approval. We need to be able to give input on that and to see that. Um, some of the things that Catherine Palter of Stanford wrote in her letter um, were some examples of how the conditions of, of approval uh, from the county, even at the high level, even mm -hmm. what's been released so far, uh, just sound completely undoable. I think impossible is one of the words that, that uh, she threw out. One was around housing. The conditions ask for some, I think, 2,000 additional units, well, many more units of housing than Stanford proposed. And uh, there was subsequently a report or an analysis of that that showed uh, if that housing is built, then there'll be additional traffic. I think quadruple the number of kids would be in the school district. Mm -hmm. So Stanford's saying, hey, this doesn't sound like a good idea. It doesn't even sound like a benefit to the community. Um, she also pushed back on traffic. Um, people are concerned that the hours of monitoring, uh, whether or not there's more traffic now on Stanford campus, is just too limited. It's like for an hour, mm -hmm. uh, once in the morning, once in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. It's monitored twice a year. And so people are proposing that um, there be different tiers, I think. It's a three-tier system. Yes. Um, yeah, peak hours, peak directions, um, and also a limit on average daily traffic. And Stanford says that, well, if you limit traffic throughout the day, then maybe that means that, you know, community members can't come for our, you know, our shows and our talks and our lectures. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they're saying that's not a very good idea. And I think the main thing is that um, the conditions suggest that any development uh, in the future for Stanford uh, is reviewed in in periods of time, instead of just approving the whole thing for the next how many years? 20, Twenty years, years? twenty-five years, 20. or so. Yeah. I'm curious. So, so the planning commission, commission, the county planning commission, is set to hold three hearings starting at the end of the month of Palo Alto on the GUP. Um, 
What were your impress impressions from Joe Samidia this morning in terms of what this means for next yeah. steps and the rest of the process? Yeah, well, he he's um, completely saying that, you know, this is the normal process. Mm -hmm. There's no need to halt uh, uh, planning hearings, uh, that they are open. They're open to the university. They're open to the public. And this is the process that we need to be going uh, along for to get the best results. So um, he doesn't want to stop them. He doesn't want to postpone them. He doesn't want to have study sessions. Um, there have been, he, he was very adamant about saying that there have been meetings. There will continue to be meetings. Um, so March 20th, sorry, May. May 30th. May 30th. And there's two in June mm -hmm. as well. In San Jose. Yeah. And the final conditions of approval, the 100 pages plus, will be released with a staff report for the May 30th. Um, meeting, so um, that will be in a couple weeks. Stanford will be able to look at them, will be able to formulate its response, will be able to come to these meetings, and um, he keeps saying open and public process. So if people want to know what Stanford's concerned about and what Stanford's going to suggest, then they can come to the meetings, and Stanford will be, you know, heard. Um, conditions of approval are not set in stone when mm -hmm. they're released, um, mm -hmm. and he says that you know. The county expects them to be amended, as he says, massaged, you know, and they're, adjusted. And they have to be approved ultimately by the Board of Supervisors, right? Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah and that's part of the application process. Mm -hmm. So what happens, I think the question is, what happens if these conditions of approval just are not acceptable to Stanford? Stanford can withdraw their application. Um, there's probably a lot that's going to go on between now and then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but I mean, ultimately, I think that's what the, the process would, would call for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and he's also uh, emphasized how Palo Alto needs to come out um, to these hearings. I mean, this is fairly unusual since the county seat is down in San Jose. Um, it's unusual for hearings to be relocated, mm -hmm. but because of the importance to this community in particular, um, it's going to be held here. And he's hoping that additional, there may be additional just public meetings um, held, maybe not on the planning commission level, but just informational meetings may be held as well. So, yeah. Um, as far as the district goes then, um, this Tuesday is the hearing, uh, the, the board, board meeting, meeting as mm -hmm. usual. And then have they indicated anything else about um, what their stance is? Um, have, have the three board members who are going to be voting, have they actually said something in a prior meeting? Um, the process. I, I missed, I was on vacation oh, at sorry. the last yeah, meeting in April, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's... And it was very positive. Yeah, very, very I think positive. it's, maybe, and maybe they're sort of figuring that out now, now that there's more moving parts to it, um, but yeah. TBD. TBD, <laughs> okay, yeah. Any other questions from the... Well, I'm, did, so if the school district, if the Palo Alto School District approves this deal that they worked out with Stanford, mm -hmm. you're saying it could potentially be null and void depending what the county does. So, Yeah, I mean, if there's no development agreement, okay. there's no deal with the district, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that those conditions would have to be, um, those benefits would have to somehow come into the conditions of approval right. um, at mm -hmm. some level. There's a huge difference between what was in the environmental impact report as far as just legally required mitigations. I think right. it was on the order of like four million. Mm -hmm. Is that right? I think um, so. And the... Uh, Versus 138 million. Yeah, the deal between Stanford and the yeah. district was um, larger. Mm -hmm. So, yes. TBD. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I guess that wraps it up. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you think that there are any other people who would be interested in this topic, uh, we ask you to share this video by going down and hitting the share button. We will see you next week.